I am very happy to introduce Daniel Kuhl, uh, who's going to talk to us about Biomarkey. Uh, I'm quite excited about this one because I think Mark is like the plotting package I've heard about all of the time. You do this cool of stuff, but I never really like diving into it. So I'm really excited to see what you can do with this. Uh, Daniel, uh, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Dan. Um, I'm going to talk about Biomaki, which is a package for plotting things like protein structures and multiple sequence alignments. But uh, I've been working on this package for a long time, but have made a lot of progress recently. Um, and I'm about to tag a new release uh, that includes a lot of new features that could be helpful for working with protein data. Um, in the future, the plotting may be extended to things like structural RNA and DNA sequences. So why Maki or Machia or Machia? I just say Maki and nobody stop me. Um, Maki is a Julia native plotting and interface framework that makes it easy for users to construct not just plots, but uh, machinery for displaying and interacting with data. It utilizes observables, which are variables that other variables can listen and react to. So this enables explicit synchronization and event triggering, which is really the heart of user interface. Maki types are also easy to uh, look inside and investigate. One thing that I use all the time is this handy um, uh, type of field names pipeline to see what the types are made of. And I just sort of go recursively through things um, and can get a good idea of what things uh, are laid out like. Um, also, there are multiple backends. GLMaki has by far the most work done. Um, GLMaki opens in a separate window for the display. There's some support for others, but that's expected to grow over time uh, as future work. So BioMaki exists for several purposes, and here they are in roughly in order of importance. The main purpose is, for, is to provide plotting functions for types in existing BioJulia packages. The second is to provide a helpful interface for general data analysis and um, working in BioJulia. I think the bio community is kind of small right now, but maybe it'll be easier uh, for newcomers if there's some sort of graphical front end. Another reason are tools that can make selections and generate new data sets. Uh, sometimes being able to select things um, and make judgments based on visual representations is the right way to go. Um, finally, connecting other languages through a common interface can make some of the most powerful software by taking advantage of their different strengths. So far, there are two packages that I focused on, um, MITOS and BioStructures. Obviously, BioStructures is about protein structures, but MITOS uh, has several modules for structures and multiple sequence alignments and for gathering other sort sources of information. Uh, Protosign is a very impressive package for molecular modeling but it's hard to use and isn't in the Julia registry. I've done some work on it, and I think there's a lot of potential. Um, up here is uh, an ordered dictionary. This is what the plot data looks like. You can plot the objects directly, or you can use the plot plotting data function to get this dictionary of observables that you then plot so that you have them at, uh, at your disposal to uh, easily manipulate. This first little demo shows information about a protein. We have a structure, but there are uh, also functions to get basically all of the data for the protein using its accession ID and the Unipro database. It includes tons of information about things like significant positions in the structure and sequence and a list of over 2,000 other reference IDs from other databases. 
at the bottom, there is a text box where you can prompt GPT for a description of the protein um, or whatever using OpenAI.jl and an API key. One of the bigger recent developments are selections, which can be done using the mouse or by modifying the selected observable in the plot data. It doesn't seem like much, but the selections can communicate with other plots, like the multiple, se multiple sequence alignment here. Uh, when you click on a structure, you select a residue. Soon there will be modifiers, like you can hold down uh, control to make multiple selections or alt to select particular atoms. There are informative tool tips, but if they get in the way, they can be easily disabled. Uh, Biomaki can also be used for viewing and creating uh, structure related point clouds and meshes. This animation on the right is of normal modes from a dynamics model called the anisotropic ne network model and they can be combined with different phases and extrapolations. The wireframe or mesh uh, is an alpha shape for a protein structure based on atomic coordinates. So alpha shapes are exclusionary uh, and based on the radius alpha. Um, on the left is another example of an alpha shape, but the, in this example, there are two radii. The other radius is of atomic spheres originating at the atomic coordinates. So you can make large spheres and then decompose them into points to create a larger and denser points, point cloud from which the surface is computed. For one uh, widely used piece of software called FPocket uh, that gives features based on uh, structure, almost all of them are based on alpha shape geometry. And if you want to use another algorithm to get a mesh, there are other options like Flux 3D, um, which is a machine learning package for dealing with point clouds and meshes. There are a few more plotting functions based uh, besides protein structures and multiple sequence alignments. On the right here, you can see a plot of a short protein sequence using molecular graph where the sequence is converted into a SMILES chemical representation and then plotted using Chiromaki, which is the two-dimensional or uh, canvas display, and it shows accurate stereochemistry and atomic numbering. Heat maps can be made from distance and contact maps from biostructures or mitos, and the data inspector tooltips are enabled for those as well. So we have structure plotting for multiple bio packages, and multiple sequence alignments, selections as well as tooltips are enabled and methods for av are available for creating new data. Future work will in include extending support to other backends, uh, adding more examples and demos and improving the documentation. And based on some of the other talks, there's some exciting work going on in BioJulia with machine learning. So maybe this front end could have some effect there. Contributions and collaborations are very welcome, like, uh, new demos and fixing spelling mistakes. Uh, right now, I think user testing and feedback is the most useful thing once I get that new uh, version tagged and out there. I'm pretty much always on Slack and I pay attention to GitHub and feel free to contact me about literally anything. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much for that, Dan. Uh, do I have any questions? Uh, How's your experience been uh, developing with Maki? Uh, plotting is a kind of a bit of a sore spot for Julia, so I'm just kind of curious. You know, you built a whole package on top of it. Like right now, my workflows use like five block and set because of stability. You said something about stability. Sorry, I missed a few. Oh, I just need—I just need to say that like I don't have the same kind of problems. Like you know, everything is much more flushed out. There's more documentation. There's just more you know, just an older package. Uh, so I was just curious, like, how your experience is with Maki? Because uh, I, I know some people who work with plots.jl, so we're just considering switching. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, so I think the main difference is the observable structure and also uh, how the figures are constructed, too. Um, like I showed earlier, there were those uh, recursive sort of fields you can go into. It's really easy to see what they're made up of. And... Um, 
once you get the hang of the observables and the event triggering, um, it really becomes a, a greater experience than just plotting. So. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would also say <laughs> we uh, with Mark, you need uh, user testing and feedback too. So <laughs> I just uh, wanted to ask like if you from the top of your head have like one big thing that you would like to be improved like from your experience because you seem to have now quite extensive experience. So um, anything like your biggest pain point maybe? Uh, I uh, not everything works with WebGL mach -E yet. Um, like directly, you can I can display stuff, but the interaction doesn't work yet. So I think expanding into those other backends. Um, RPR Mach -E looks really spectacular in terms of graphics, so I'm excited about that uh, with ray tracing. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, expanding into those backends and getting support for those. What sequences uh, by row? Uh, the amino acid coloration. Can you describe it? How you got that working? Um, specifically, what working? The uh, when you select it and then it makes the vertical line. Oh yeah, so that um, wasn't trivial, but I will put the example up. Um, so that's also an observables thing, like. Um, I had a problem with uh, uh, things updating at the same time or something like that. So there was like a, I was getting notification errors uh, because th things were updating too quickly. So I had to modify it a little bit for that. Um, but once I had things uh, sort of triggering in a sequence rather than at the same time, uh, it started working really well. Well, and stuff myself, and I'm wondering if you've run into one of the headaches that I've experienced, which is that when errors happen in the course of updating the observable, just tracking down where it came from and what happened seems to be incredibly difficult. Uh, I wonder if this is something that you've experienced as well. Um, yeah, so I guess that comes with um, just the experience using it and, and, and typical methods like putting print statements everywhere. Uh, but um, error messages can give a good origin sometimes, not with observables. Yeah, um, so I guess I usually look at the um, event triggering uh, as it starts and, and progresses, and then I like disable things and see if it changes, sort of, sort of, disable this and that and see if the error message changes. So if you don't know what the error message is, you just change things until it's different. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I can maybe add something to that. What sometimes helps me is uh, actually not using the anonymous functions with the lift, right? Like lift, uh, observable A, B, C, do something because um, then it makes it harder to see in the stack trace what's what, because everything's just called var or something. <laughs> yeah. So if you make named functions, then at least you can see what was called where, and that makes it much easier to follow the stack. But I guess I also just developed the skill to ignore all the observables <laughs> stuff, which is not great, admittedly. Maybe there can be some, uh, I don't know, way of rewriting the, or filtering the stack trace. To, to remove all this observable stuff that is extraneous. Okay, sort of can, I hope nobody else minds. Um, but um, I think when we feel as I had these with observables, what I'm really missing is just something to go, when an observable is defined, actually having more information about that observable that could be then uh, brought up in a stack trace. Um, because yes, it was just like observables like themselves, errors can't, which is sort of generated functions. Um, which just have bar something, that those sorts of names, which tell you absolutely nothing about what they're doing or where they came from. Mm -hmm. um, and so if they're able to capture more in contextual information uh, and actually present that as well, I thought that could make it somewhat less painful. That's a good idea. Improving the error messages some way. 
Yeah, I mean, it's simple as I know, like, if you had like an observable macro, then you'd be able to use the like line and module um, variables to actually capture some information about where that observable is defined in the file. Um, but I guess when it's just a function, then it's a bit harder. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> that's, a, that's definitely a thing to, to improve in the future. Yeah, for sure. What was your inspiration story for biology? Inspiration story? It uh, it just didn't exist like a couple of years ago, and so I was like, "I'll make it." I don't I don't know. I'll make it, and so that's how it started, pretty much, because um, I'm into like biochemistry, um, and so I wanted to see protein structures and work with them, and so that's how I sort of got started, and then I learned the uh, BioJulia packages um, and which ones uh, were best for utilizing protein data. Um, and so I guess I started with the ones that were the most solid, which were biostructures and mitos at the time. Um, and they're still pretty solid. Um, Protosign, I, I think, has a lot of potential. Um, but it's not currently registered. And uh, I can't get it to um, compile in Biomaki. So it's like a separate file. You have to do a workaround. Um, but uh, plotting structures works. And uh, I think pretty soon you'll be able to manipulate it because it's like for uh, molecular modeling and engineering and stuff like that. So uh, that could be really cool. Notice any deficiencies with any biology packages that are current and present that you wish could be improved in the future? Um, I don't know. That's a difficult. Uh, well, I haven't really explored explored sequences that much. Um, I guess I didn't. Uh, there's a lot to do with structures um, in a visual way, uh, and like with interaction. So, um, I guess sequences is something that. Um, I had trouble getting into. Um, I'm not sure. I think you have gotten quite a lot more than your bargain for this setup. So we'll thank that, Daniel.